Hello and welcome back everybody to the second part of the first lecture on autonomous navigation for flying robots. In this video I will briefly illustrate a few of the use cases of quadrotors and with that motivate why we believe that quadrotors will become really relevant uh, commercially but also scientifically in the near future. So before we start with the more technical applications um, uh, let me first ask you um, to think personally what you would like to use such a quadrotor for um, and for the moment just think of it as an autonomously flying camera. And then depending on your um, personal interests you might come up with the idea that uh, you could um, film yourself during your next ski run um, um, to have a camera that just follows you automatically or that flies in front of you and takes really nice imagery. Um, in a similar application, quadrotors could also be real life savers. For example, after an avalanche goes off, um, you could send out a team of quadrotors to quickly monitor um, the hill from above to get visual, um, visual imagery uh, such that the rescue forces can quickly um, um, uh, come to the, to the victims and, and, and save them. Um, uh, si similarly, also after uh, nature catastrophes, uh, like a tsunami, of course, or an earthquake, uh, quadrotors are really versatile helpers that uh, can be sent into, into buildings to inspect them. Uh, in particular, if you're not sure whether the, the building is, um, is still safe for, for humans, um, if, you're, um, if, if, if possibly the building could collapse, then you better send in a robot. And quadrotors in, um, have the advantage that um, they are not obstructed by debris on the floor. So imagine you would send in a wheeled robot, then um, it might get stuck very soon um, if there are stones or parts of the wall lying on the floor. Um, similarly and, and more interesting for personal use are quadrotors that you can send uh, above your house to check, for example, the roof for damages after a storm. Um, Similarly, also for uh, inspecting, inspecting buildings in, in general. Um, uh, so, for example, bridges have to inspect it uh, on a yearly basis and that's a quite um, uh, expensive effort because uh, you have to have one or two inspectors um, uh, being transported next to the supporting structure of a bridge to, to look visually at um, the state um, uh, of the pillars. And if you had uh, a very easy to use uh, flying camera for that, then that would save uh, enormous amounts of money and time, obviously. Uh, another uh, application is um, uh, in remote farming. You could send out quadrotors quickly to crop fields to check uh, whether additional watering is needed, whether the plants are healthy, to, to monitor a field in general. Uh, but then even if you um, uh, detect um, uh, certain diseases, you could um, spray um, certain, um, um, certain substances on the plants very precisely and exactly in the right amount um, based, on, based on your visual inspection. Um, another uh, huge topic of course is uh, to map, to use quadrotors to map buildings both from the outside and the inside. Uh, I guess most of you uh, will already have taken measurements of your own apartment if you're, if you're moving to a new flat. Uh, you have to take all the measurements of the furniture and um, of the rooms and doors. And uh, if you had an automatic tool like a small quadru quadrotor that you could send in a room uh, then, uh, and, and would generate a 3D map, um, uh, this would be very helpful. So this helps people, uh, common people like, like you and me, but it also helps, of course, architects to quickly scan in uh, huge buildings um, uh, to get such 3D maps. This is also uh, highly relevant for industrial applications. Uh, if, you, if you look at um, production sites, then most of the time there is also no accurate floor plan. And um, similarly, walking around and taking all the measurements can be quite cumbersome. Um, and um, also, um, uh, if you have three-dimensional structures like pipes and so on, then it's, it's not really easy to um, create such a map uh, manually. Um, also very interesting, but qu still at a quite early stage, is uh, our transportation tasks for quadrotors. Uh, Amazon launched recently um, a video showing uh, an octocopter uh, transporting um, a package uh, to a customer. Uh, this was more a proof of concept, uh, of course, because there are so many un unresolved legal issues there. Um, 
but um, it, it is clear. And, and also Domino's Pizzas uh, showed a video where they delivered a pizza uh, to a client. Um, so, so while this is still at an early stage, it's, it's clear that with Quadrotors you can, we're actually close to uh, implementing such applications. So with that, uh, I've shown that uh, there are many useful applications for Quadrotors and um, that also has a large commercial potential for the future. Um, however, current solutions uh, require typically um, a skilled human pilot that navigates manually the Quadrotor um, in, in the, these applications and that obviously limits the applicability. This again motivates the main question in this course, namely how can we increase the autonomy of flying robots? This brings me down then to our first exercise, um, interactive exercise that we have prepared for you. So we would like you to propose one or more ideas um, what you would like to use an autonomous Quadruto for once it exists. And then just write th this idea in the message forum and then vote for your favorite idea. And then we also would like you to discuss there what the particular challenges are of each of these ideas and how large the commercial potential is. And then based on your proposals, we will discuss the three most popular ideas next week in class.